there friends welcome ladies and gentlemen boys and girls to how to fix your Madden game 101 I'm gonna be talking about offense I'm gonna be talking about defense I'm gonna be talking about how to shape your game plan how to adjust on the fly offensively and defensively and hopefully try to stop some of those games where you should win and you don't and make those into some dubs so with that I'm not gonna piss around here let's just get right into it first thing I wanted to talk about was play calling offensively okay play calling on offense is a little bit different than defensively defensively you're reacting to whatever the play call might be so generally you want to be a little bit more quick-minded with your play calls not simple-minded I mean quick-minded quick-minded with your play calls to a point where you can almost just call what you want and you know what you want out of your plug you do this multiple different ways now they've changed it quite a quite a bit over the years I mean you have tons of options my personal favorite is just going old school formations I know what kind of formation I usually want to run I know what they're under I know I know the personnel really and uh, it's easier for me to find it that way because I like I'm I know football I'm not trying to brag but uh, there's other ways to do it uh, you can go concept where like you could do like individual play types you can actually do like play types, pass, run, option, RPO. Or you can go personnel, which honestly might work for me because I run a lot of, as you can probably see, a lot of two tight end sets. Love the two tight end sets. But that's the first part, you know. It's to each his own. We'll get into uh, playbooks and stuff later. Um, but you want to you want to have that quickness to your offensive flow for sure. You don't ever want your offense to be in a stale mode where you're sitting still for a little bit because that gives defensively the other person time to react. I'm not saying just go up there and fucking hike the ball as quick as you can. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is the quicker you process shit, the quicker you'll be able to adapt out onto the field. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. A lot of things that people have problems with is identifying the difference between zones and man it's more like second nature to me but I remember having it a couple Maddens ago when they changed the engine I remember having a huge problem like reading defenses and, and whatnot it took my it took my eyes a while to adjust and learn certain patterns to things but if you're out there I know if you're probably playing Madden, you know how to fucking count, right? Okay? So you count your DBs back. Sometimes they can come into like a base line set, and I'll show you how to do that when we get on the defensive side. But normally, right away, they're going to come out. You're going to see what they're going to be in. All right? If there's one safety back, it's usually a cover three or a cover one. If there's two, it's either a cover two or it's a cover two man. Maybe a man blitz. You never know.
So you're you're basically staring at the same things generally. Okay, it might confuse you because cornerbacks might be backed up a little bit more than they usually are or somebody's playing a crap load of man against you and it don't look like man. I'll give you the one cheat route to put all that to bed. That is the drag route. Your outside guy. I'll give you a perfect example. We could start doing shit visually now. Okay, see, okay. I'll show you the difference between man and zone. Just run a plain jade player here. So we're gonna send that square out into fly land. And we're going to send the circle on the drag. Okay, so we got that going for us. Now, what I want you to do is watch that corner on said circle over there. Okay, he's going to... If it's man, he's going to pull with me. Okay, with, which I'll show you. But we're in zone. Okay. Could have swore I put the man, but okay. So he's in zone here. So he's his player is actually gonna back off once I hike the ball. That's how you know it's zone. See him back off. I threw a pick there, but I mean you get the you get the gist. I don't think I changed his route either. So let's try that again. So he's going to back off in the... Look at him wide open hitting that seam. What you want to do with zones is you want to hit seams. Okay? So he's in a cover two right now. Alright, so the, the pockets that you're going to be able to hit is in between the yellow zones. In between the yellow zones there. Okay, so he, he's actually on a, this is a cover two blitz. So you see that big wide open space there. That's the, that's where I threw into. There's also that big wide open space behind it in between the two blue zones. Okay. And another weakness to the cover two is C in between the deep blue zone and the shallow blue zone that is also a pocket that you can hit but I don't recommend looking for that every time so let's change it up here to where it's not uh, it's not zoned so I can show you the, the difference do a uh, cover one this time So we're going to bring that guy on a drag again. Same play. Okay, you see he's backed up off of me a little bit. See, that can mean zone or it could be man. You don't want to make reads just by that. Okay, so if he pulls with me, it's going to be man. If he doesn't pull with me, it's zone. See how he pulls over? So that's your differences between uh, zone and man. So I gave you the cheat route for that. I'm telling you the drag route will show you that every time. Every time. So if you have another route in mind just run a drag underneath that just in case it's a good bailout it's like a it's like a check down to your wide receivers pretty much and they'll go out and get you like eight to nine yards of grab if you if you hit it correctly i want to talk about some useful plays also 
I know uh, you might struggle on the, one side of the ball more than other, the other, like run versus pass. So, a um, couple plays. I want to start on the run side. We're, we're just going to go in the concept here is the trap. Trap has been useful as hell. Even this 5 6 trap that you'll only find in like shotgun formations. Uh, the trap has been useful as hell for a couple couple years now. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna run it just in uh, just to show you. We'll throw it on random. See, this is a perfect set for for the trap right here. You got that where your center is. You got that D tackle right on his left side. The left guard, your left guard, is going to pull right. I'll show you in the play. He's going to pull right and kick over and hit that, try to hit that other guard because that guard is going to push up to hit more linebackers to get you more leverage on the run. It's a beautiful run. Usually gets me three to four yards every carry. And that, hey, that's, that's good. And even that one, that's a that's a ten yard game. Easy. So the trap's really useful run. It's in a lot of uh, single back formations. It's in a lot of shotgun formations. Uh, I'll give you an example of a shotgun trap too. But I highly recommend the trap. That mixed in with a couple of other different runs is uh it's pretty it's pretty lethal we'll just hit random again another good setup for a trap we got uh basic four three here uh lots of space in between the gaps positive yards i mean that's all you can ask for especially if you're just hitting them with a cha change of pace run you know Trap's a very good run. Let's talk about another one. Uh, I recommend creating your own playbook for the stretch play in particular. Because for some reason it is not in a lot of playbooks. And I don't understand it. So we're coming out in the doubles north. It's one of my favorite single back formations. Just because of... Uh, I probably should have took Cole Beasley out. Because he can't block worth a shit. But uh, it's one of my favorite formations to run out of. Just because of you... They can take it as a passing formation or running formation. Even though there's not too many pretty pass, uh, pass plays in it. Uh, it's very effective to run out of. Here's here's where I'm going to get in depth with play calling. Okay, I want you to have a few different options. I don't want you to pick. I don't want you to pick a run play that's already in your audibles. Okay. Stretch is not in my audibles, as you can see. I have a bailout in the halfback dive formation. Okay, there's not a lot of whole room for me to uh, hit a stretch play here. The formation set pretty wide. And if you see that, be conscious enough to, uh, to identify that. Okay, it's not a race. You don't have to, you don't have to get up there and hike the ball right away. But... That's where I want to talk about audible. Audibles are so important because they get you out of so many different situations. And if you have a set audible in, like, say you create a playbook, like you have set audibles and you know, you know what your bailouts are, you're golden. Like pretty much 90% of the time, it, it pretty much comes up to human error after that. So this would be a situation where I would forego the stretch and 
hit the dive. So we switched it to the dive. And we're all about positive yards here. And this ain't going to give you nothing but positive yards. That was only like a yard and a half gain, but it's positive yards. Now say... Say I, I hit him with that a few a few times at least. He starts pinching his line, okay. Maybe he spreads these guys out. All right, makes it very hard for me to run still. But, but the special thing with finding plays that work for you, I like running this play to the left side sometimes. Just because I like those formations where I can get my wide receivers out there to block. So we flip this left. And even if you want, you can take this guy over. Throw him as an extra blocker. But they're in man. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave those two guys one-on-one -on -one over there. I'm probably going to have a one-on-one -on -one with myself either with the linebacker or the safety that's sitting back there but we're about positive yards back here boom five yard game can't beat it can't beat it so that's another op run i don't want to say it's op because they're all pretty balanced uh, another play is a toss play i'm not going to show you the toss play but uh, there's a lot of people that I've seen uh, run that play, especially out of the I formation, close formation. Uh, it's there's just something with that toss play that's like pretty pretty decent. Um, of course, I'm only gonna mention one more type of run, and it's like you're. Of course, you have the outside zones, which are pretty much stretch plays. Like, outside zones in your shotgun playbook are really just elongated stretch plays. But the power play has also been OP for years, and it, it, since they balanced everything, it's it, all these runs go hand in hand. Your trap, your power, your toss... Don't abuse that toss, though, I'm telling you, because that's really easy to catch on to. Your traps, your powers, even your dives. Dives are good running plays, believe it or not. They're simple, but they're effective. couple pass uh, options I would recommend doing a lot of like if you if you're a person that likes to mix up their play calling I would do a lot of play action boots because you could easily hit the R3 and throw the ball away that way because you're gonna have time depending on how the how you set yourself up and the movement and the crossing routes on the actual bootlegs are pretty good. Uh, the stick route is another route. What are we at here? Right here. Okay, so you have that option of the tight end either doing a, a small hitch or he goes into an out formation that's extremely useful extremely useful because that's a that's pretty much a tale to where if he's if they're zone or man or not kind of like that drag route but I recommend every play that you do, do a lot of hot, hot routes. Mix it up. Be creative. Because there's only so many things that people can catch up or catch on to. If you're mixing it up constantly with crazy different hot routes and you actually know what you're doing, there's, there's really no defense to that. You just pretty much have to hope you get lucky. And the most important one that I wanted to talk about on the passing side is, I can't find any of this fucking play type shit, 
is the four vert concept. Okay, I'm not actually talking about the the four verts. I'm talking about the cross in the middle. Okay, and I'll just uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, crossing routes are very lethal in this game. Very, very lethal. So I would try to mix up that route in particular with maybe like a slant coming around the opposite side or the same side. Maybe even a drag coming underneath that. Just different things. Different things, different ideas, different game plans that you can do to cr confuse or manipulate AIs and just stuff to make your game better. Uh, we talk about hot routes. We talked about reading the defense. T talked about adjustments. Oh. We're going to talk about... Last thing I want to mention on the offensive side is uh, slide protections. Okay. Regular, 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 regular. Say he's got a good pass rusher and he's trying to uh, say it's Jerry Hughes over here. He's trying to stack that left side. Get some more pass rush off of that. Okay, say he even uh, he even bends the line to the left side and just sends that right end straight to get a pass rush. Simplest thing, man, is count. Count. And some formations are fucked up where they'll they'll uh, they'll line up in a fucked up way to where it'll get like an instant pass rush off, and you got to be aware of that. And sliding protection is easy as pressing L1 and sliding to the left or the right, or you could choose to double team a certain person that say say his D tackle is getting in my backfield every fucking play I'm double teaming the shit out of him just by hitting L1 and down right L1 and down on the right stick or say I wanted to forego this whole stick thing and run two fly routes and everybody else block I could just hit L1 and max protect that'll pretty much give me as much protection as I need to get a pass off especially if they're like all out blitzing me I want you to be a. Uh, I want you to look at things more often. What I what I mean by that is just reading certain things. Like obviously, it's it wouldn't be an, a good idea to run up the middle right now. Okay. Obviously. They're spread out pretty damn wide. If I drop back to pass, I'm going to have to stay in the pocket. Those types of, of mental things, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of pre-snap stuff. That's all I could really say about that. It's a lot of pre-snap stuff. That's really hard to say pre-snap stuff wow but offensively stick with those th three running plays 
that I said trap power stretch throw in a few tosses get your play action going run that four verts and different do different audibles and make sure you get your audibles right to where you have bailouts for certain formations and Pre-play is clutch. Pre-play is clutch. I make more reads pre-play than I do actually in play. Believe that. We're going to go over to the defensive side. And here's where shit starts getting really in-depth. I struggled with defense for like the first uh, couple days I played this game and then I started learning a little bit more and doing controls and shit and stuff that's been in the game they just sort of changed it around but uh, we'll start off with the play calling again you got to call coverages that work and what I mean by that is there's a lot of bullshit in these playbooks. Okay. Like corner blitz. I probably called that once or twice since I made this playbook and I've been playing for about a week and a half. Has it been that long? I don't know. Play calls that work. Obviously, it's not a good idea to come out and man every single play. Obviously, it's not a good idea to come out and zone every play. But you could come out and zone every play and throw in a man every once in a while and really fuck with people's heads. That's the, that's the type of thing I'm, I'm saying. It's just knowledge. It's knowledge about your play calling. It's knowledge about what what's going to happen in the near future. It's kind of like predetermining. Just like you have to predetermine on offense, you have to predetermine on defense as well. Coverages that work. Cover four is a very good coverage. Okay. Cover three, probably my personal favorite, just because there's so many different cover three blitz package looks. And I'm just going to throw this one in just in case you guys are struggling like I am with the 4-3 defense. I cannot do 4-3. Four, 3-4 three. Three, four is like... It's like the way to go. That extra man in coverage sometimes is clutch. So I recommend just staying on a 3-4 defense. Uh, timely calls. When to call versus when not to call. Okay, obviously... It's fourth and five. I'm stopping the dude pretty much through the whole drive, and I just got to stop him one more time. He's probably going to throw. Most likely going to throw. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to call an all-out blitz on his ass right at that time and get lucky with the a sack no he's probably gonna throw that shit over my head and go for a first down easily that's the type of stuff I'm talking about when I'm saying timely calls another thing is I'm, I'm talking a lot of uh, predetermining but go out there and predetermine offensive play styles I recommend playing uh, franchise and getting used to the AI first. But even with them, you can predetermine their offensive play styles because they're going to hit you with what works. 
If they're going to trash you in the pass game, they're going to trash you in the pass game. If they're going to trash you in the run game, they're going to trash you in the run game. But they're going to continually look and find to see what you're looking for and how you react to stuff to maybe the next time they come down the field, they hit you with the screen. So you got to... Yeah, predetermine that stuff like constantly. That's why Madden is kind of difficult. We're going to talk about one of the most important things here. And it's uh it's going to be your quick adjustments on defense. No, I'm just picking random plays. Now, your quick adjustments, all you have to do is go highlight a player, okay? Say I wanted to do play this guy as, like, a deep blue zone. All I would have to do is press X and up on L, or up on the left stick at least. And bam, he's in that blue zone. He's got that deep area covered. Okay, say I wanted to bring him out to the flat. I press X. And I have my choice between a hard flat or a cloud flat. I'll show you the difference. Cloud flat is going to sit almost at the line of scrimmage. Or I'm sorry, it's going to sit like five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So when that play starts, he'll back up to about here and just sit. Okay, as to a, a hard flat, a hard flat's going to be more like middleized right here. He's going to sit right here and just have this zone in here. That's more, he's playing downwards more. That's what a hard flat is. Say I wanted to put him into that outside zone, but he keeps getting beat deeper. Uh, all you have to do is hit X and go to the soft squat. Ha. <laughs> He'll cover more out here. Say he's still getting beat like that. All right. Well, now I got myself fucked up with the controls. All you have to do Wow, why does them go all the way over there? What the fuck? Oh no, it didn't. All you have to do is press triangle and you have a coverage adjustments list, okay? Totally different list. Now, I haven't looked too much into this. So I may be learning a little bit. You have your options to man align, protect the sticks. Interesting. So I could send him down into a curl zone without even fucking touching them. That's crazy. Okay, so I just learned that. So you have a whole different list here just for coverages. Now this is where you either put them down into a press situation. You can hit left after triangle and show blitz. And one thing... That I kind of wanted to do and show you guys is say you get a weird formation ran against you say the monster stack formation okay it's literally as simple as this to stop that say or it could be as simple as you're getting a toss play ran on you repetitively and your guys will not cover the sidelines 
all you have to do is press triangle and left on the left stick or right on the left stick and that will base align you into your regular formation completely so I'll give you an example to that say I want to move him over that guy's gonna stay over there okay because I just base aligned him so that's where he stays he's not gonna follow me into the slot see he sticks to his zone it's a little trick to help you stop outside runs So we learned about the, the coverage. Here's something else in coverage. See how I have Jordan Poyer in this hook curl zone right here. Okay. What if I wanted to double digs just to make sure he didn't get anywhere? All I would have to do is go to the player selected. Hit triangle, individual, the player icon of the receiver that I want to personally man coverage. Hit square, and I could choose the shade right, left, back off, or press them. That wasn't individual coverage, though. That's how you do individual coverage. So individual coverage. Scrap that part that I just said. Individual coverage. You just press X. Man coverage. Square. And that brings Jordan Poirier right into man coverage. Double man coverage with him. So that's how you double somebody. You can also get your different types of blue zones in here, which is pretty neat. That was the third inside. That's pretty neat. So you could set your zones to outside to inside. That's awesome. I don't think they had that in the last one. But you got your options, your QB spy, which is just X and right on the right stick, and that'll send him into a spy. And they changed this to where it, if you press R1, you have the option to just shift your defense at hole. Okay, so if I wanted to shift him right, I shift him right. Okay. I could pinch him too. That's what she said. But R1 also has the guest play where, like, I could press up on the right stick and that would be a pass, or I can run commit either to the left or right or up the middle. But the most important one in this is the QB contain. Say you're versing a dude online and he's got. Lamar Jackson, he's being a complete dickhole. Okay. I've seen Lamar Jackson personally run through like two spies. So whatever I'm going to do to stop him is, say I come out in this cover one, I'm taking this fucking linebacker. I'm putting him in a spy. And then I'm hitting R1 and R1 again for contains. And boom. Boom. Cover one spy. And you could, I mean, you could do it in zones too if you want. See, I got my cover three out here. Boom. Cover three spy. So it's a lot of playing around with the controls. It's a lot of, uh, 
I suggest spending a lot of time in a practice facility just like this because it's going to it's going to take a minute to uh, get this all muscle memorized. And it's a huge part of the game. It's huge. I can't even... I can't even stress it. And the last thing I wanted to... Uh, well, the last two things I wanted to talk about pertaining to the defense is... Usering. I want you to practice with somebody. Maybe it's your favorite player on defense. Say your favorite player is like Micah Hyde. You practice with Micah Hyde. If you don't like covering and you don't like doing all that extra shit, Madden has made it easier for you this year too. Okay, like the, the whole new line moves and stuff that you can do. Like I just spent maybe like... A six week period in one of my franchises and I one of my dudes has like 16 sacks and it's only week eight so yeah they they made it pretty uh pretty balanced to where usering's not like people that like the user D line used to get upset and shit because they kind of nerfed the the pass rushing that's kind of that's kind of gone with the new pass rushing moves. So I, I encourage you, use user somebody, but user who you would like to get better with. You know what I'm saying? That's that. Last thing on defense I wanted to talk about was adjusting zone coverages. And what I mean by that, we'll get a fresh play call here. What I mean by that, zones can be manipulated no matter what type of zones they are. They can be manipulated to play inside, outside, down low, or up top. That's also what she said. So we'll just do we'll just do the plain Jane cover three again. Okay. All right. Say you're in a situation where you're just getting shredded in the past game and you got to do something to change it. Okay. What if he's picking you apart with um, short passes? Okay. Best way to stop that is to change your zones. Triangle brings up your coverage adjustments. You can play over the top, outside, inside, or underneath. So all you would do to stop that, say he's hitting me with drag routes, like almost continually he's got one down there. I'm going to play underneath, and I'm going to pick one of them motherfuckers. So all I have to do is press triangle and r down on the right stick. And as you can see, those purple... Uh, those purple coverages turn to hard flats. So they're going to guard straight across pretty much to that, that number 30s on the sidelines. They're going to go straight across. There isn't going to be too much moving backwards for them. Now say I wanted to keep those purple zones because I wanted the depth in them. But, dude keeps hitting me down the middle with slants. All you do is simply hit triangle and move your coverage to the inside. And see how, see how the, the corners are moved slightly inside. Not a whole hell of a lot, but slightly. Or... If he's hitting me with bootlegs and he's hitting those crossing routes that go directly towards the sidelines, all you have to do is hit triangle right on the right stick outside. Bam. That shit's going to be covered. 
but here's a tricky one say he's hitting me outside the numbers but it's not that deep that's what she said god damn it I would do the same thing to where if he was hitting me underneath with drag routes I would go underneath change those to blue well the light blue and then I would just hit it outside and I got hard flat zones covering the outside now super helpful uh, tips like I can't come up with better tips like this is how this is how I've been playing for years now I mean I'm not the worst Madden player on the earth I think I'm pretty damn good uh, and it's a lot of it's just adjusting and reading and predetermining last thing I wanted to talk about is your game plan one go create a playbook please create a playbook I cannot stress that enough because a lot of the plays that you might not like like to run are not going to be in those generic ass playbooks aka the stretch plays that seem to be non-existent in most playbooks for some reason another thing is come up with a game plan based on what you like to do make sure you're keeping in mind that the NFL is built to set up the run with the pass now as to where it used to be set up the pass with the run it's kind of flip-flopped especially on Madden and the last thing with that is you gotta play your style meaning you gotta play find plays that work for you there's tons of formations tons of sets out there fuck around with the playbook for a couple couple minutes like it's it, it doesn't take that much time take it into practice mode start practicing those those plays see what you can do differently within those plays that helps you understand how how the computer is going to react how you're going to be covered etc but oh man that's all I could really tell you this has just been so wonderful hasn't it uh, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more informational bundles of joy like this video I hope I could help you guys out and with that I'm Kirk 99 Get high, bitches.